Hi and welcome to Mike's Garage. As you can see, I've got all kinds of goodies set up here and I'm going to be doing the wiring pretty soon. And before I actually start doing that, I kind of breadboarded it out to see how I'm going to have things placed and what it's going to look like. I need to determine my wire size, what sort of connectors that I'm going to need. And yeah, so let me show you what my thought process is. If you see anything that's out of line that you'd recommend something different, please, please, please leave a comment. All right. Let's take a look. Okay, so I kind of set up a breadboard using this uh, styrofoam, similar in dimensions to uh, this piece of wood right here. So this is 10 inches in width, and the actual board that I'm mounting to is 11, but for demonstration purposes, it's pretty close. So as you can see, I have three T-class fuse holders here. So these are Blue C fuse holders. Uh, they can handle 225 amps, uh, minimum and it's over 300 amps is the maximum. So I have South Bend Euro listed uh, fuses for it. So these are T-Class 225 amps, 125 volts. Uh, the IR is 20 KA or 20,000 amps. And then you can see that it's Euro listed right there. So I'm going to call each one of these a bank. And... So you have three that are in parallel, three that are in parallel, and then you have this standalone. Combined, this is 300 amp hours, 300 amp hours, and then 280 amp hours. All right, so these three combined in parallel will put out 300 amps. Now the fuse is 225, and I should never come close to that because the absolute limit that this can pull is going to be 300. You can see here, let me try to zoom this in, 300 is the maximum that it can pull. Okay, so with that being the case, I have my three different banks here, and you figure that it's gonna be split amongst the three, and if I take one of these offline for maintenance, say I disconnect this, uh, this big one here, and I'm just running on these, at 225 amps peak each, it's way more than the 300 amps that this will max out as. Okay? Now you might say, why do I have these? Why do I have these three? If I got this T-class fuse right here, which I'll explain that in a moment, why do I need these? So we'll pick on this battery. Say this one shorts out, and it shorts out that bank. You're going to have this fuse, which is going to allow a maximum of 225 amps go into it from these other batteries before the fuse blows. Okay, And then each one of these, hopefully they, they, they do what they're supposed to do, but these breakers... Um, which have an IR of, I believe, uh, 10,000 amps. These should pop, but in a um, worst-case scenario, if for some reason it doesn't, then this is going to limit how much can go into this. Now, I'll get to these copper uh, bus bars that I'm going to be making in just a minute, but if you look at all these batteries... They're all going to be connected together because I'm going to have bus bar, bus bar, and then a bus bar, and then each one is going to have a 2 aught cable connecting them. So it's one big bank as far as the EG4s uh, are concerned. Okay? So once again, each bank has its own T-class fuse, and wire-wise... So I'm going to have two watt, uh, well first, it's going to be two gauge wire connecting the three of these together. I'm going to take this bottom one here with a two watt. It's going to come around and up, and it's going to connect right here. This one is going to be same thing. It's going to have two gauge wire connecting them together, not the wire that it came with. So this came with six gauge not using that, using two gauge. And that's going to be this bottom one here. It's going to loop around and then it's going to go um, 
probably to this side. But I got to figure out lengths. All of these are going to be the exact same lengths for the positives and the negatives. Um, and then the negatives are going to be these top ones. Uh, since the positives are the bottom ones because you want to make sure that, you know, you have, say, a positive here and a negative here and then everything connects together. So that way your batteries um, are balanced as much as you can for a setup like this. I mean, best thing that you could do would just have bus bars that everything connects to um, instead of putting batteries in parallel like that. But it gets... With all these batteries, um, it gets a little bit tricky. I kind of did that over here with these to where each one has its own uh, individual T-class fuse. And then there's going to be uh, another T-class fuse for each one of these 12,000 XPs as it goes in with 4-watt cable. All right, so back to this. Um you have your holders. The outputs of these are going to go onto these bus bars. So this is 24 inches of copper. There's two of them, two inches in diameter. And I'm going to be able to cut this up into six pieces. So each one is going to be three pieces, total of six. That will give me my positive and negative bus bar, positive and negative, positive and negative. That's my six. I have these uh, standoffs right here. So these are going to mount just like everything else. And then the uh, section, it would be eight inches, would then mount onto this. And I'm going to drill out uh, for my bolts and screws. I'm going to use stainless steel. Uh, it's not the best conductor, but realistically, your copper your lug's supposed to be flush on this with a washer on top and then crank down. And um, it's really the lug to this is where your, um, your transfer of, uh, of wattage is going to be. All right. Or you could say amperage, but it's basically the, uh, the energy flowing through it. Um, let's see what else. So, yeah, these are fully insulated. Uh, so there's no way for um, any heat from the bus bar to get to this wood because this is going to absorb any heat and obviously absorb any uh, voltage, of course. Let's see what else. So then the output of this is then going to connect to this T-class fuse and then it's going to connect into my EG4. Now, like I said, each one of these are going to connect together. So for the positive, for the bus bar here, it's going to have six holes in it. One, two, three. And then you're going to have uh, four is going to go to this T-class fuse. Five is going to connect to the other bus bar. And then six is going to connect to that bus bar. Over here, it's only going to have five holes in the bus bar for, uh, for it because it's not connecting to anything over there. It's just got the one connection back to this um, to tie them in together. Same with this. Uh, the eco-worthies. So the eco-worthies, I'm going to have probably use this positive here because I've got to keep the cables the same length, and that's going to come up and then connect there, and then that's going to connect to the bus bar. Uh, negatives will all be the same length. The negative bus bars are all going to connect together once again to watt cable. So, kind of recap: two watt cable connecting each of these together, or I'm sorry, two gauge cable connecting e each of these together. Two watt cable is going to connect to the bus bars, um, and then from the bus bar to the T-class fuse, and then to the 12,000 XP itself, I'm using 4 watt, so 4 slash 0. That will take everything that this thing needs as far as power. Now, in the manual, it says you can use two 2 watt cables or one 4 watt cable. I decided to go with a single 4 watt cable. That way, I only need to have 
one T-class holder and fuse instead of needing two of them going to each unit. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's pretty much it as far as uh, connections. I think it'll look pretty cool. So it's all going to be on this board going across. It's going to be nice and, and uh, clean. Um, I'm just, I have all my cable in. So everything that I need is right down here. You can see there's the four odd stuff. I mean, this is, this is massive. Um, but all the cable that I need is here. And then for my solar panels, um, I've got eight gauge wire and that's going to be wiring up all my solar panels. So got that. Uh, what I am waiting on right now, I have most of the lugs that I need, but I'm waiting on my, uh, four out lugs to come in. And then I was short uh, some two aught lugs that I needed as well. So got that on the way. Once I get the four aught lugs in, then I'll be able to start putting together the rest of these cables. And the same for over here on this system. I've got this two aught cable that I'm going to be removing, and it's going to be a single four aught. Um, you know, for the positive and a four aught for the negative, and I'm connecting each one of these. One will connect to one bus bar, uh, the other one connects to the other, and I'm just using a positive in this example. And then you can see I've got two watt cable connected together for the positives, and then there's the two watt going across for the negatives. Uh, the big thing that is important to me is trying to keep things as balanced as possible, and also making sure that if I you know, need to take um, some batteries down. The rest of the system can continue running and, you know, have no issues. And that's why you want to have one big bank instead of having um, these three only connect to this verter, three, these three only connect to that, and those three only connect to that. Because if I took, say, this one out, well, now this inverter has a lot less potential that can go to it. It's just relying on these six batteries and nothing more. It's missing this one, which is about a third of the capacity. But by connecting all of the bus bars together, I could essentially, you know, take a bunch of these out and everything will still work perfectly, uh, perfectly fine. Now, it's only going to be a two watt cable connecting each bus bar, so I can't completely take everything out, you know, like all of these out at the same time, because that single two watt cable isn't going to be enough uh, for this to get fed from another bus bar. So um, it gives me some flexibility for maintenance. And the reason for all these uh, T-class fuses is it's safety. So once again, these protect the batteries if there is an issue. This protects me if the inverter goes south. Say for some reason the inverter shorts out, um, I want to be able to definitely have this thing shut down. Now, there are protections in place uh, by, uh, by EG4 and LuxPower for these. Uh, so if you have a failure, it will shut itself down. Um, that's something that's... Uh, very cool. Like when you overload it, it shuts itself down. So um, we have those protections in place, uh, which is nice. And the only last thing that I'll have, which, well, I got a few other things that I'm working on. So uh, up above, I'm going to have a uh, automatic fire suppression system right above there. And then above that over there is going to be another one. So I'll have that in place. And then I'll probably, um, I'll probably have uh, surge protection in place, both on the DC side coming from the solar panels, and then also on the AC side uh, coming out. Um, I believe it's Midnight Solar that, uh, that has the, the ones that I'm looking at. Uh, they have some that are 300 volts and others that are 600, but... Um, and hopefully I got the name right, but I'm just going off of memory, but yeah, so I'll have that set up as well. 
and I've got to do uh, get all my grounding done with the solar panels and everything. So it will be about as safe as you could possibly get it. I realize that this is a lot of power. This is about 135,000 uh, watt hours sitting right here. And then these battery banks over here is another 60,000 with another 15,000 uh, of, um, you know, power banks or power stations, that is. So there, there's, you know, well over 200,000 watt hours sitting in this room. So um, I just want to make sure that everything is fully protected uh, the best that I can. If you look at this building, it is a metal building, which is good. And um, the insulation that I have right here is foil on one side. Uh, on this other side, uh, it is plastic, but it is, uh, it's all fire rated. So everything here is pretty much uh, fire rated. Um, at some point, maybe behind this wood, I might um, put like a sheet or two of, uh, you know, that, that concrete type drywall and kind of put that up maybe, you know, in between here and there and stuff going across. I might do that at some point. Uh, right now it's not a huge priority just because there's really not much here that's flammable with the exception of the wood that everything is mounted to. So that's it for now. I know this is a long video, um, but just wanted to uh, kind of show you guys what, uh, what I'm up to next and um, getting closer. Thanks for watching Mike's Garage.